This is the next series in our cold process soaping. Um, today we're going to do Grandma's Old Fashioned Lard Soap. We are going to do more recipes with Kimberly's new perfect recipe for cold process soap, hopefully. But for the moment, we're going to do a Grandma's Old Fashioned Lard Soap. Alright, so as we discovered, <laughs> this doesn't do a pound, it does a pound and a half roughly. So I'm still going to do two of these batches, but for every pound and a half of soap you want to make, roughly, <clears throat> you're going to use 16 ounces of lard. So I'm going to put my bowl on the scale. I'm tearing it out. And I have some lard. I buy my lard from Soaper's Choice. And um, I always put in the um, description, I mean, there's a place where you can comment where you make orders. Please supply my order with Canadian lard. And that's because American lard is not cleaned as thoroughly as Canadian lard is. And so you can end up with a piggy smell um, in your soap. And nobody wants the smell of pig in their soap. So, um, the way to prevent that is to buy your lard from Canada through Soaper's Choice. Alright? And they have 7 pound containers and 50 pound containers. Um, last time I talked to them, they said they pretty much gave up on uh, using American lard anymore. When you're just getting started, you can purchase your lard from your grocery store. On one side, it says something with the, it's in a green and white container normally. It has the Spanish word on one side and you rotate around, it says lard on the other side. Um, uh, that's because we have a large Spanish community in this country and so on, on lard, they put both, uh, you know, both names, one on each side. So people can get confused because they just see the one word there and they don't realize it's lard. You can find it in your baking section um, in your grocery stores, uh, very close to the Crisco. And um, we now have 16 ounces of um, oil. And we're going to take that 16 ounces and we're going to put it here. And as I said, we were going to do two, and then I forgot. So we're doing a two, two of these recipes so that we'll get close to three pounds. And then I forgot. And I'm getting close. I'm getting so close. In your recipe can have a slight fluctuation but typically this recipe is calling for Pacific information please put as closely as absolutely possible and always use a digital scale never use any kind of food scale it has to be digital in soap making um, let me find a place there we go put that there all right so we have our lard in here so now we're gonna make our lye So it's time to get out the goggles and the gloves. Okay, all right, so now we're going to mix our lye, <clears throat> and for the water, it is 97.28 ounces.
Okay, so uh, we need, for the water, we need 6.8 ounces, 6.08. So let's put our water container on here and tear it out. Get our distilled water. In this series, we've discussed that you can use your city water or your country water if you're using it for your home use only. But remember, sometimes chemicals in store-bought water or country well water will react with lye and cause a problem with your soap. Distilled water is pretty cheap. It's the best way to go. Okay, so now I'm going to tear that out. That's one pound and a half of soap. And then I'm going to do that again. 6.08. Your scale may not give you that option, and you may want to do 6.1. All right. So now we have our water mixed. Now we're gonna mix our lye. And as I've said in the past, you wanna use a small measuring uh, spoon so if you get too much, that you can put it back in the container. Always shake your lye because the lye that's on the very top has reaction with the air that's in the bottle and uh, it, ca it weakens it some. All lies this way, so shaking, mixes everything up all right and so then for the lye we need 2.15 oh i got too much All right, now I'm gonna tear out, and this is just to help you understand that you can multiply this as many times as you want, depending on how much soap you wanna make. Oh, and I did it again. It's so handy having this little spoon. You can just fix your boo-boos. And this recipe is done on a, let me make sure I got that right. This recipe is done on a 5% super fat. You can increase that to a 10% super fat. I'll show you how to do that in one of the videos coming up forward. Remember to put your lid on immediately because lye has a reaction to air. So you want to keep it sealed as much as possible. So let's get rid of our scale. Let's move our big stainless steel pot close at hand. And we are going to take our lye. Because I've got two here, I'll do it in about two sections. Always have a firm grip on your container. didn't want to come out. Now we'll add a spatula to our lye tray. Everything here will get clean special because it's got lye. Remnants. Putting it on my tray so that keeps everything safe. No lye dripping on the counters, no lye dripping on the floor. And so 
So now we're gonna pour our fresh, hot lye directly on our oils. And we're gonna start stick blending. If you'll notice, well, if I had it plugged up. If I had it plugged up, container there's a really small risk of stuff being able to come up and fly up on me I'm tilting it on its side because that helps to keep with such a small batch that helps to keep the stick blender fully submerged well blended. Uh, once you get that blended together, you'll put a piece of cardboard here. Now, if you put your towels over the top, because of these little posts on the Essential Depot mold, your towel might not sink in and touch your product but you never know. So just a little piece of cardboard right here uh, prevents that. And then you wanna cover it with towels and blankets for 24 to 48 hours. When After 24 hours, you check it. If it's still too soft to take out of the mold, then that's when you would leave it longer. So I'm gonna put an empty mold on here, hit tire. I'm gonna hit tire. And then I'm gonna put our grandma's old fashioned lard soap on here. And it says I have two pounds and 15.9 ounces. So I'm right like I said, I've, a little residue was left there just enough to not make it three pounds. So doubling this recipe, every time you double it, you're getting another pound and a half of soap. So this is a three pound loaf. Now I'm still moving it now because it's liquefied, but once this begins to firm, if you move it around, it will cause the soap to crack and, and become odd shaped. So make sure that as soon as you finish it, you put it somewhere where it can stay and you cover it up. All right, get on out of here. We got another video to do. And I forgot to tell you, thank you so much for using my Essential Depot link. You can find those links in the description. And thank you so much for subscribing and hitting like and giving me comments because this is an experiment. I'm a hot process soaper. So I'm giving this a whirl to try to be able to help cold process newbies. Experienced soapers that do cold process soap will probably have no use for these videos. But your new soapers that's just trying to learn cold process soap, I'm just trying to be able to give back to you as much or some of what I already give to the hot process soap community. All right.
Thanks, everybody.